What actually is sizing and who can we trust when it comes to a size? And is there anything we can do if we're between sizes or if we get the size wrong? Uh, there's a few things, but stick with me because I'm going to deep dive into all of this. And if you're new to the channel or if you're new to e-biking, then hit subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Now there's many factors that influence what size we think we need. It could be the size of the last bike we had. It could be the advice from a brand on their website. It could even be advice from a friend or a shop. Or maybe you even did a demo and you tried a particular size that you really liked. Buying the right size is not as simple as just choosing the size you had before because different brands have a different idea of what that size means. Sometimes different models have a different idea of sizing and proportions too. And also sizing has really changed over time and what may have been a large 10 or even 20 years ago, may be considered a medium or even a small in some cases today. So just as an example, my white e works here is a size small. It's a 2024 edition and it's roughly the same size or proportions in the frame as a specialized Levo from 2016 in a size large. So it can be quite complicated choosing the right size EMTB because obviously brands have a different idea of what sizing is. So you may want to test out a bunch of different brands if you're out and buying at the moment. And also there's historical changes. So if you're buying something older or you're buying something new, there can be differences there too. And also e-mountain bikes can be quite different to non-assisted bikes. The geometry and the sizing and the fit can be quite different to accommodate a different riding style when you're on an e-mountain bike. Now, I am going to dive into this more. I'm going to explain what sizing is and how that's really important to figure out because that's kind of set in your frame. And then I'm going to explain fit, which is something you can adapt a little bit with components afterwards to fine tune that sizing, especially if you are between sizes or if maybe you've made a slightly wrong choice with the size that you've bought. The size of a bike is governed by the proportions of the frame itself. And all of these lengths and measurements and angles in the frame give us what we refer to as the geometry of the bike. So if different brands have different ideas on sizing, we can still look at the geometry chart online for a particular model and work out if those proportions are still right for us. Reach is roughly how big a bike feels when you're stood up on the pedals. Virtual top tube length is how big a bike might feel when you're sat down on the saddle. Standover is the clearance you'll have when you're stood off the bike. Stack height is how high the front end is. Seat tube angle will change where the saddle is in relation to you. Head tube angle can affect where the handlebars are in relation to you. Most of the sizing can be found in the front triangle of a frame. And as brands increase in size, they often increase the measurements of things like the top tube and the reach. And that can be between 20 or even 25 mil in difference. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but it can feel like a big difference. For example, the seat tube angle. Now, when you're sat on your bike, whilst the top tube number will be fixed, the seat goes up and down in a diagonal orientation. On an EMTB, the ability to climb depends partly on your ability to maintain a central position. Now, the seat tube angle affects how far that seat goes back when it's in different positions. So if your seat tube angle is too slack, you could be over the back of the bike with the wheel in the air all out of control. This is why EMTBs have typically steeper seat tube angles than non-assisted bikes. And you may feel closer to the handlebars on some of those bikes, but this is not necessarily a bad thing when it comes to EMTB. Here are some of my top tips on how to find the right size bike for you. Research the brands, check each brand's geometry charts and for their rider height recommendations. 
Know your current bike numbers. Be aware of what you already have and if you like it or if you want to change something. Websites like geometrygeeks.bike can help you compare bikes that you've ridden with new bikes that you like. Test different bikes. Maybe you can try a friend's bike or attend demo days. Understand bike fit. You can fine tune a bike that isn't quite perfectly sized for you. And I will explain this in my next section. Try to gain an understanding of the relationship of reach, seat tube angle, bottom bracket and bar height. Try to get an idea of the range of each reach numbers that work for you and adapt from there. So sizing is set in stone. Well, it's set in your frame anyway, and we can't really change that once we've chosen it. But we can alter the overall bike's fit by changing the components that are attached to that frame. And we absolutely should be changing these things to fine tune a fit and make a bike feel absolutely personal to us. There's two main reasons why we would change the fit, and that is for comfort reasons and for balance reasons, or actual performance of the bike and the way that it rides. So, for example, changing the height of the handlebars can affect both, actually. You can raise the handlebars and maybe it takes strain off of your shoulders and maybe it's more comfortable. However, what if raising those handlebars then moves the rider back in terms of balance on the bike, it could then alter the grip and the weight on the front wheel. Maybe you start to feel vague in the front area, maybe cornering becomes more difficult, maybe technical climbing becomes more difficult. So as you can see, one change can make a big difference to both of those things. And in fact, all of these components can be changed to alter the fit for those two reasons. Now, saddle height naturally controls the comfort of your legs as it may put more or less pressure on your muscles or your knee joints, but it also controls how much power you can drive through the cranks. Now, the saddle fore and aft just means you can move your saddle along these rails and you can move them closer to your handlebars or further away. And this will obviously control that virtual top tube length there, but it can also help you alter your body position or your balance on the bike when you're sat down in the saddle. Now you can add spaces or remove spaces from underneath your stem in order to control the handlebar height. And this effectively fine tunes the stack height of your bike. And as we learned earlier, raising or lowering our handlebars can change the comfort or strain on our shoulders, but also the amount of grip and weight that's on the front of the bike. You can change your stem and get a longer or a shorter stem, and this will change the virtual reach of your bike or how big it will feel when you're stood up out of the saddle. You can change your handlebars. You can get higher rise or lower rise handlebars to get them higher or lower, obviously. And you can change the width of your handlebars. You can make them shorter by cutting them down or you can get longer handlebars. And these things will obviously affect the comfort of a ride because it may put less or more strain on your shoulders, but it can also change the way that the bike feels when cornering. A narrower bar may make the bike feel more nimble and more agile, whereas wider bars may be more confidence inspiring and less tiresome when hitting long technical descents. And even crank length and rear wheel size can be changed or chosen uh, specifically to fit your body's proportions and your sizing and your needs. So all of these things can be adapted to fine tune a bike's sizing or indeed the fit of it. And as we learned earlier, sizing can creep up in say 20 millimeters at a time. And so we know that there's a few things we can change on the bike in those 20 mil rounds in order to get us to fit much better if, for example, we've bought the wrong sizing or if we find that we're slightly between sizing. Mm -hmm. 
So sizing can seem like a bit of a minefield, but there are some rules and tips that hopefully I've given you that will help you along the way. Um, and I think the key takeaway here is to go and try lots of stuff. Go to demo days, ask to borrow friends stuff, have a look in bike shops and get an idea of what sort of sizes you like, what sort of feels you like in terms of how big a bike feels. Um, and demo days are great for actually trying this in the real world because sometimes just sitting on a bike doesn't give you an idea of how it feels when you're riding it. But hopefully this has helped you a little bit uh, to feel more confident going out and buying something for yourself in the future. But let me know if you've got any big tips that I've missed down in the comments below and hit that like button if you want more like this in the future.